Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be tackling policies. Now, policies is a very convenient way for us to authorize certain users to be able to do certain actions in our application. The easy example of this would be that you may have two different types of users for your app. You may have admin users and you may have just regular users. Of course, administrators of your app can do certain things that regular users just can't do. So what is the easiest way to handle this in Laravel? The easiest way is through the use of policies. Now, the first thing to understand about policies is that policies attach to models. So they are protecting a specific model. They are for protecting resources of your application. And what I mean by that is that they are attached to some sort of table in your database. I think it will become a little bit more clear once we start to talk about what I want to do for our project. Let me jump into Chrome. And what I have set up here is I have this new user called admin user. And then I have the same exact app pulled up as test user. So we will be testing against these two users, obviously giving administrative rights to this left screen and just the regular user here on the right. And I want to show you the difference between that. So I am logged in as a user here, and right now these two users can perform the exact same actions. Now, if I go to my customers list, of course, I have this new add customers, but perhaps I only want to be able to add new customers if I'm an administrator. If I'm just a regular user, I don't want people to be able to add customers to my list. So I'm going to say that that is an admin only type of thing. So let's get right to it so we can get that done. Let's jump to the terminal and run PHP Artisan, as we've always done. Let's go back up here to the make, and we have this make policy. So let's check out what we could do with that. PHP Artisan help make policy. So we see that a name is required, and we do have certain parameters. Now the options that I want to use in this case will be model. Like I said, policies are attached to models. So what model is this? Well, of course, this is our customer model. All right, so let's make that command now. PHP artisan make policy. And what's the policy going to be called? It's going to be called customer policy. And we need a model. Like I said, models need to be attached to policies. So we'll run the dash M flag. And what is the model name? Customer. That is the model we are looking for. So there we go. Policy created. Jump back to PHP Storm and let's go into apps. And now you have this new policies directory. And inside there, we have this customer policy. So this class is pretty much ready to go. And what it has is each of the RESTful methods that we've been working towards since the RESTful controllers lesson. If you didn't check out those, I did a four part series on RESTful controllers a little bit earlier in this series. Definitely check that out because it will make this a lot easier to understand. So with that being said, we have a create, we have an update and delete and a restore and a force delete. So everything here has been mocked out for us. So let's start right away. So the one that I want to do is that create method. Remember, I said that I didn't want my customers to be able to add new customers unless they were an administrator. So we need to get rid of this button on this side and we need to give it to this side. So let's write the policy now. So to create a method, it gives us a user class and you'll see that across the board. You see that each of these methods, you get a user and if applicable, you do get the customer in our case. So you get the model and you get the user. And now out of each of these functions, you have to return true or false. Basically saying, is the user that I gave you authorized to perform whatever this is on this customer? And if they are, then of course it will proceed. If they don't, then of course they get an error. All right. So let's say the create method. How can we prove that a user can create a customer? So let's say this, let's return in array. And what are we looking for? We're looking for the user's email and let's just pass in an array of different emails. So in my case, let me jump to table plus to show you what I have. I have this test user. And then I have this admin at admin.com. Of course, you could always add a new column here and maybe call it administrator or admin. And in that case, you could just check that column. I'm going to do it by limiting what emails I am authorizing to perform. So admin at admin.com will be authorized to create that. So I'm going to add that right here to this array. And if you had another one, of course, you can make a new line and add as many as you want here. 
Again, this is just one way of doing it. You could do it in many different ways, but I do find that this works for administrative purposes because typically you only have one or two of these super users. So we are good to go. That admin will be the only one authorized to create a new record. So how do we actually apply this? Well, to apply this, let's go to the customer controller and then go to my store method. And before we actually run the store operation, we need to let our controller know that we need to authorize this request. And we use that same keyboard. We'll say this, authorize. So we're going to authorize a create, and then we need to give it the model that we're going to create. So what are we going to create? We're going to create a customer class. There we go. All right. So we should be good to go. Let's give this a shot and see what happens. Right here on the right side, remember I am logged in as a non-admin. Let me go ahead and add new customer now and see what happens. Add customer. Nope, can't do it. 403, you are not authorized. Let's do the same exact thing over here on the left where we are logged in as an admin. Any information will do. Add customer. Bam, we did it. So we are successfully limiting someone from being able to do it unless they're an administrator. Great. However, it wouldn't really make any sense to have this add new customer button if our users are not authorized to perform that action. So we are protecting our back end, meaning that they're not able to do it. Even if they went through the terminal and curled directly into our application, they would not be able to submit that request. So we are protected. However, showing this form really makes no sense. So how do we remove this add new customer conditionally? That's actually quite simple as well. Once you have your policy in place, let's jump back to PHP storm and let's go to the index. So index.blade.php file and let's find that button. Let's see right here. Add new customer. All right. So let me wrap all of this in a new directive that we haven't touched on before. And it is can. So can the user perform this and can. And then inside of here, we'll paste that back in. So what do we pass to can? we pass something very similar to what we had before. So we are authorizing a create and it needs an app customer class. Remember, this create method is kind of special because there actually isn't a model yet for it. So in that case, we're only going to pass in the model class itself. So with that being said, head back to Chrome. And now let's refresh this page and we see that that button is gone and this one Nope, still there. It looks like we accidentally grabbed the customer's list as well. So let's fix that in just a second here. Yep, there it is. So let's pull this out and let's create outside of here some more HTML. We'll say, give me a row with column 12. And inside of that, then we'll have our customer's list. So that should fix it. Hit refresh here, hit refresh here. So there we are. So we are no longer showing that add new customer at all. As you see there, nope. You can't see it. That's pretty cool. So that's how policies work. Let's do another one. What if we wanted to only allow deletes? Okay. So let's work on that one now. Back to my policy. Let's find the delete method. And there it is. So how do we authorize this? We could use the exact same logic that we have here before. I'm going to copy this. And in my delete, I will paste that logic in. So only people that have that are able to delete. Now, for the sake of this example, just to prove how it will work, I'm going to go ahead and change this to maybe bananas at admin.com. Obviously, that user doesn't exist. I just want to show you how it will fail even for the admin now. So let's go back to our controller and go to the destroy method. And we also need to authorize this request. So let's say this authorize a delete request. And as a second parameter, we don't pass in the class, but we actually pass in the customer model. We definitely want to pass that in. All right, let's go back to Chrome and I'm going to try to delete one of these records. Remember, this is our administrator here and I will try to hit delete and nope, it does not let me do that. Okay, so now let's change that email again so that it is the correct one. Admin at admin.com, hit save, go back, hit delete. And this time we are able to do it. So that's pretty cool. And that's how that works. So a couple of things about policies. Remember that some of the methods have two parameters and some of them have only one. So what are the ones that have one? Well, the create. 
And that makes sense because there is no model yet, right? You're creating the model. So, of course, you could not have a model if you haven't created it yet. So, for that, you only need a user. So, when you use that method, let's jump up here to the store method. What you pass in as a second argument, because you always do need a second argument in the authorize, is you pass in the model class, right? What we're passing into it is the full model class, not a particular model in our application. Does that make sense? Notice that here there is no customer. However, when we did it in the destroy method, we are receiving a customer, right? So that's what we're going to pass in instead. So you authorize the requests. So that's one thing about policies. Remember that some have one and some have two. So what other ways can we authorize a request? Of course, as in many things with Laravel, this is not the only way that you can authorize a request. Another common one that you can do is through a middleware, a custom middleware. And those are pretty cool. Let's say that for some reason, I don't want to show customers information unless you're an administrator, meaning this view right here. I don't want anybody, unless you're an administrator, to see the details of a particular customer. Of course, this is our show view. So we want to protect our show view. And I'm going to do it in a different way just to show you how to do it. So let's jump back to PHP Storm and let's go to view. So view, of course, is pertaining to show. And I will go ahead and bring the exact same code that I have here. So that way, only the admin at admin.com can actually view the records. OK, so now let's jump to the web.php file and let's find that show. I did jump into a resource for controller. I will actually disable this for now. And I will bring back all of this code here. Remember, this code, this single line here, and this is the exact same thing. But for demonstration purposes, I only want to do it to one route. Of course, it is possible to put policies in an entire resource. But for this demonstration, the show view is the one that I want to protect. And here it is. So when we call customers slash an ID, I am hitting my customers controller at the show method. All right, let's authorize that now. And we'll say middleware and inside middleware we'll have a string and we'll say it can colon so it can view and then what is the model that we are using we're using the customer model so we'll just use customer and this is the customer that i want to grab right here so let's do that now customer safe all right and that's it let's go back to the browser i'm going to hit refresh on this side and now we are forbidden but if we hit refresh as an administrator it looks like there's a name route here that we are not calling, and that's the customers.edit. All right, let me do that really quick. Let's see. Let's add name customer.edit. Let's see now. Refresh. Looks like customer.destroy also needs a name. Remember, in the previous lesson, we actually refactored this to use name routes. So now, when we switched out of our resource controller, we no longer have those name routes. Let's just name all of them. Create, store, and finally, update. And there we are. All right, so that was just a little mishap from when we switched over from resource. But you see how that works. So admins are allowed to view details. Regular customers are not. So there we are. If I click on one, I am no longer allowed to do that. Then, of course, we can also restrict this so that you cannot click on a link because it wouldn't make sense for you to be able to click on a link if Laravel already knows that you are not authorized to view that resource. So I'll leave that as a homework assignment. I want you to be able to control the link. And let me show you where that would be. If we go back to our index method right here, this is the anchor tag that I'm talking about. I only want to show this anchor tag if the customer is authorized to be able to view that resource. Otherwise, they should not be able to do that. So with that being said, go ahead and pause the video and then I'll show you the solution. So now let's go ahead and handle that case. So all you have to do is actually just break this up into a new line. And we can do this in one of two ways, right? So we can either wrap this line and this line together, or we could just repeat it. It's up to you. I'm going to repeat it because I think it'll look cleaner. So let's bring the same exact directive in here. And let's say can. So if it can view the customer, so if it can view the customer, Go ahead and give them the link and we'll just say and can and can down here and that's it so if it can view it then go ahead and show them that but what about the inverse of that what about cannot that's the other one we haven't learned that one so if it cannot view the customer 
In that case, we're just simply going to grab the customer's name and display that instead. So end cannot, and we'll re-indent that. And there we go. If we go back, we'll hit refresh and no links at all, as you could tell. But of course, in the admin page, we do have links. So this is clickable and this is not. So that's it. That's the overview of policies in Laravel. As another side project, go ahead and try to implement the entire customer policy. So that way you have a very nice customer policy running right alongside. One last note to talk about policy is that policies are auto discoverable. Notice that we did not actually register a policy, but this is a relatively newer feature of Laravel. If you ever needed to register a policy, then you need to go into your auth service provider and right here under policies, you need to put in your policy. So in this case, we would say model is customer. So app customer belongs to the customer policy. And that's it. That's all you would have to do to manually register a policy. So that's it for this episode. Go ahead and review the documentation on policy and see if you can find any other tips and tricks on how to use policies. This is a very common thing for a lot of applications. So definitely familiarize yourself with policies. And when you're ready, let's move on to the next topic.